Are you tired of getting killed? Being on the receiving end of a headshot? Whether you're holding or peeking over and over again? Nice Sometimes instantly, and seemingly having absolutely no shot against your opponents, no matter what you try? Ain't no way that dumb swings me. Well, what if I told you, with this one simple adjustment, you could better your chances to not instantly die so you have a chance in the fight? You could go from this... He has an op. My op now. ...to this. Oh, fuck. So I'm Disclaimer, nothing in this game is guaranteed or promise, and your mileage may vary. That being said, you should see benefits and some success when playing this, and it won't hurt your game negatively to try. Oh my Alright, before we get to this one simple concept, let's take a minute to talk about crosshair placement. So, we all know what it is. Crosshair placement is basically us managing where we're aiming or looking at at all times. Now, to take that one step further, we are pre-aiming into areas or angles where we anticipate contact to be made. A few moments later. So that when we do make contact, our crosshair will already be in position or damn near close to it so that we're prepared to take that fight and ideally never be caught off guard. Now, here comes that concept. We say ideally we never want to be caught off guard. However, we do want our enemies to be caught off guard. So I want us to think about how we're going to look on the enemy screen and crosshair. More specifically, I want us to think about anti-crosshair placement for the enemy. Simply think about where their crosshairs will likely be trained on and don't be standing in those spots. This can apply to when you're passively holding for an extended period of time. Or it can even be during quick duels in fast-paced scenarios. Thinking about how you appear on the enemy screen, you want to be a hard target to hit, or better yet, a target that they never even anticipated. Start incorporating off angles into your game today, and you will see instant success guaranteed. Instead of holding in a standard manner, try playing in an off angle where they can't check you or are forced into a 50-50 scenario if they have to clear your position. Another example is if you're holding standard and that makes you take contact early on an angle, it might not always be beneficial for you. For example, post plan scenarios or ascent in B main, like my earlier video. If you take contact too early and die, that can be detrimental to your team, even though on paper you were doing your job holding down your position and fought for it to the death, but lost. That's just unlucky, right? But perhaps we could have done a little bit better by taking the fight a little later by holding an off angle instead, so the enemy is more committed to clearing you, hard clearing you, clearing your angles, and approaching and wasting more time and presenting you with more opportunities to strike instead of passively holding that common angle. Now, for an example that's not just simply holding, but versus someone who is currently actively fighting you. If you know that they're about to swing or peek you, if you can, you never really want to be in the exact same spot. They've seen you right there before. This is because with their crosshair placement, it'll be a decently easy shot for them to land the higher skill levels you face. So, to combat this, we can think about anti-crosshair placement and keep moving into different spots every time we are spotted. You always want to be repositioning to avoid being an easy kill. Maybe not abandon your post fully, but abandon the exact same angle to avoid getting pre-fired and instantly headshotted. Even if your movements are minor, chances are that small adjustment is way better than being in the exact same spot, as it'll force the opponent to resort to having to react to your new position and may have a chance of throwing off their aim. Alright, now let's take a look at EG versus C9, namely Ethan here, and pay attention to his movement. I like the fact that most of this replay is not in his POV, so we don't really focus on his aim, but rather what he looks like on the enemy screen. Ethan boldly taking it to half, finally pulling off just the tap. It's just a fake, and it's another 1v1 for Ethan. Now that one is ridiculous. What a bad dude, man. So right off the bat here, we can see Ethan has no utility. He jump spots the first corner, and he's aware of the likelihood that somebody on the enemy team's probably pushed up. Notice how when he swings this corner, he even taps his crouch key, which might have thrown off Jake's uh, crosshair placement a bit. I did want to make a quick note here that if you do want to throw in like quick crouches into your movement to throw off your opponent's aim, it looks like you're gonna have to hold it for like a second or a half second because if you quickly tap it, your character is only gonna slightly bend the knee, but it doesn't really go down too much, which can be good or bad at throwing them off, but just interesting to note to try to account for your animations with today's theme. 
All right, so it's a few seconds later. Sep is just through a flash from sight, so they think that he's probably sight or like that side of elbow. But he actually managed to sneak down here back halls and caught Demon 1 off guard. So now it's a 1v1. Ethan tapped, but then once he realized where Zeppa was, even though his teammate dies, he sticks to get half. Never mind half, you can see here Ethan is actually sticking it the whole way until the enemy provokes a response, forces a response from him. So he's sticking it, he dodged Zeppa's flash, he's gonna play it off his reaction. So as soon as he sees Zeppa swing or even jiggle in such a way where he knows he can get shot, that's when he gets off. Now, what happens in the next few seconds happens so fast and it's so subtle, but watch how Ethan places himself and plays this. He set himself up to win the round earlier than this moment. He fast retook with his team so he still has as much time as possible to try to defuse the spike. The bomb plant is still pretty early and it's gonna be hard for Zeppa to win strictly off time alone. And right before Zeppa first challenged, Ethan stuck and got half. That's very important. So Ethan forces the issue, he got half, there's still a lot of time, and he tapped the bomb again with a half noise. But notice how as soon as he taps, he walks and takes a couple steps to his right. This is because he knows the half diffuse sound cue is a lot of pressure and Zeppa does have to check it eventually, sooner than later of course because it's half. And Ethan knows that Zeppa knows that if someone taps the bomb and you swing him right away, the only area they could be is like near the bomb. So they're gonna be pre-aimed on that spot. He knows this. So what does he do? He goes a little bit wider, because first of all, it's gonna throw off his crosshair placement. And second of all, he has to go wider, not more tucked in. Because if he tucks in, Zeppa could see that he's not even on the spike and just disengage for free. So that's gonna be info that he gained for free. Ethan doesn't want that. So he goes wide and he can see him first as well. As soon as they make contact again, what does Ethan do? He repositions yet again. He's going towards the spike to tap again, to pressure again, because he knows that Zeppa knows that he's not but on. that whole time, he's also aware of the fact that Zeppa can try to surprise him, because Zeppa knows that he has to like, you know, tap the spike to try to force a response. So he tries to catch him off guard, swings prematurely, Ethan's already ready for it, and he's in a totally new spot. So Zeppa wasn't ready for it, and in that millisecond, Ethan had him lined up, easy kill. His positioning, quick thinking, definitely gave him the edge in this 1v1, and had Zeppa play right into his hands. Great play, great movement, great anticipation from Ethan. That's all for today's video. If you guys made it this far, I wanted to take a second to thank you guys, and if you appreciate this like I appreciate you, please be sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, and let me know in the comments if there's anything specific you wanted to go over. Once again, thank you for your time. See y'all in the next one.